Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM is about to publish its latest transmission development plan for 2015 to 2024. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the changes that are likely to be incorporated into the latest version. Hi Terence. Hi. What is the plan and how does this version differ from the previous plan? Well, the, the plan is really about um, the way we're going to roll out grid ca capacity uh, over the 10 year horizon. So it, it says, you know, we need to have uh, a strengthened grid uh, in certain areas, or the transmission lines in certain areas. We need more substations in different areas. So it looks at the uh, supply demand and where new generation is coming on, where the mo main load centers are. But it then has to look at the transport, the most efficient transport and distribution mechanism to get that electricity from where it's generated to the load centers. So this, this plan is quite detailed in the sense that it's, it says, you know, these are the s sort of p power lines we have to build, and uh, these are the um, substations we have to build. And, in the, and it's, uh, it's quite important, I think, as well for both Eskom uh, internally, the generation division, as well as uh, future independent power producers to know about these plans because it de determines how you get connection to the grid. And uh, in this case, you know, there's a, um, there's been a, a change in the way the plan is going to be uh, rolled out. The initially, we it's about the same number, so it's still 163 billion over the 10-year period. But the big change is that a number of these projects, the power line projects and the substation capacity, have been deferred into later years. So we know that there was the multi-year price determination, the third one, uh, where Eskom applied for 16% uh, tariff increases and received eight. That's had a knock-on effect on to the finances of Eskom as a whole. It's, it's well documented and well known. But it's also affected the capital plans of the transmission division. So although the, the overall global number of the 10-year period is the same, a lot of the projects are deferred into the later year, so really into the multi-year price determination four period. So after 2018, from 2019 to 2024 is when most of the capital expenditure in this, uh, in this area will be uh, directed. But it's still the same number of lines. Ultimately, we still need this 13,000 kilometers plus of additional transmission lines and quite a lot of uh, new substation or transformation capacity as well. ESCOM has also indicated that it won't be as easy to connect future projects. I think that was the scariest part of the, uh, the latest um, transmission development plan or TDP. I think basically saying because there's going to be this rephasing and reprioritization going on, um, some of the grid strengthening and some of the areas that were going to be prioritized earlier. And I, I, must, uh, I must also add that it's not just about the capital. Um, Eskom is having major problems in securing the land, the servitudes, as well as the environmental impact assessments for these projects. So there's, an, there's a few moving parts that are affecting the rollout of grid capacity uh, and the expansion of the grid. But that, I think, is the worrying part of the new TDP. Uh, they are warning it's already, you know, with the renewable programs, it's been fairly successful. We've had two rounds where we've had closures of projects. And so a number of projects, 60-something projects, are being built across the country. We've got round three um, that are, is going to close very soon. And we've got bidding, uh, bidding closed already for round four. So a lot of these, there's a lot of renewable energy projects, and these are scattered around the country. Uh, solar, these are wind, and uh, they need, uh, you know, th uh, they need the lifeblood of these projects. Is they need to be able to access the grid so that um, Eskom can buy the power and and uh, they can get, uh, you know, a return on their projects. And Eskom saying it's getting very, very difficult from round win bid window three. We've already seen this delay to bid window three announcement. It seems a lot to do with this connection issue, uh, and they're saying from bid window. Uh, four onwards, it's going to be more difficult. And in fact, there's going to be more costs associated with connection. So, uh, uh, you know, we're also going to be having a base load tender quite soon. We're gonna, we've got co-generation projects that maybe won't uh, be as effective, but you've got the base load program, you've got the potential for imports, and you've got the renewable rollout, which we want to do at about a thousand megawatts a year. And all these are, so, uh, at, you know, are vulnerable to a lack of connection agreement from Eskom or a very high price. And uh, I think there's there's already you know uh, there's already a, a provision to do self build by the IPP so they can do their own substation work and transmission 
for what they call the shallow connection, which is really what it's the infrastructure that really is dedicated to that project. But more and more, these projects are going to be distant from uh, the deep connection. So this is where there would be shared infrastructure, where it wouldn't just be that one project using uh, that self-built uh, RPP-funded uh, uh, capacity. And that's where it's getting more tricky, because uh, at Eskom, um, and whatever the new form lights on institutionally, whether we have an ISMO, which is, would be an independent system market operator, that grid company would be the custodian of the grid and would own the grid and would need to have open access. If you've got private owners of different connections, it can become tricky as to how those, the, there's a cost recovery and who owns the assets. So th that really has to be a, a priority now, not just for the RPPs who are worried, they need to connect, but also for NERSA, I think the, they're going to have a, a regulatory hand to play here, yeah? as well as the DOE needs to come in from the policy perspective. So we need some clarity um, in, into the future as to how we're going to handle this connection risk. And I think we need to have that sooner rather than later because uh, we want the, the renewable program, which has been highly successful, not to stall now as a result of this. And we desperately need the new RPP capacity from the baseload side as well. So we, we, I'm hoping that um, there will be some sort of uh, conversation, some sort of dialogue emerging over the next few weeks and months to deal with this now urgent uh, issue. South Africa is also likely to see major changes to the patterns of electricity flow between now and 2040. That's the other interesting work that eskom has been doing um, in the transmission unit. They've been really looking at the patterns uh, over not this 10-year horizon, but over a period to 2040, so a much longer horizon, what is the uh, transmission system going to be need to look like to cater for the new generation centres and the new emerging demand centres? And what has emerged quite strongly is that we currently have a very strong east-west flow. So the, the bulk of the electricity is produced or generated in the Mpumalanga area, we are based on coal, also some from Limpopo, and it flows down into Gauteng and into the rest of the country through these big corridors. Over the next uh, you know, 30 years, we're going to see uh, a, a new generation centres coming. The Greater Cape, as Eskom calls it, is going to become a major gener source of power generation. That's going to be in the form of, in the Eastern and the Western Cape, <coughs> that's going to be in the form mostly of wind um, capacity. But th that's also where the nuclear capacity is likely to come. We know the sites that Eskom, or used to, was, well, it was Eskom now, our government is looking at, are in the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. So that's, those would be uh, major centers. Future gas would also be around those areas. And then the uh, Northern Cape is a, is a, you know, a solar heaven in many ways. And uh, there's going to be, a l there's a potentially a lot of capacity, both solar PV as well as um, uh, this uh, concentrated solar power uh, plants which have um, the ability to dispatch power. Those would be built in that, that solar corridor. And then you've got Limpopo, which is the sort of uh, future coal uh, jurisdiction, being an important uh, province. And then, of course, in Pumalanga, it's, it's relative importance in the mix, but it remains a very important power generator, or base load power into the future. And then we've obviously got these plans deeper um, into the, uh, the next decades of adding a lot more uh, imports in the sense of imports, more hydro from Mozambique, potentially more gas from Mozambique. And then we've got that Grand Inga or the Inga projects so on the horizon. So the South African transmission or grid network has to change in some ways the way it's going to be operating. So it won't just be a sort of a, a one-directional flow. We're going to see much more multi-directional elements to it. We're going to see um, power coming up north uh, rather than always flowing south. And we're going to have a whole lot of different types of technologies uh, in the mix. So it's a very interesting uh, dimension to the transmission uh, uh, evolution. And it means that uh, the, whoever the grid company is, and as I mentioned earlier, whether it's Eskom or a new company, once we have more certainty around the market dynamic, whether the, there's an independent system market operator, that company is going to have to find a way to cater for that. And that's going to require investment. And it looks like this sort of 163 billion is sort of the minimum level that Eskom can spend 
over the next 10 years just to keep us going. And we're actually going to need to spend a lot more on this grid if we want to cater for all, uh, all comers in future. And, uh, and uh, the one w further worrying aspect, I suppose, is not really related to the long-term picture, but the median, immediate term, is the fact that we wanted full redundancy on our network. So uh, that's a, a NERSA requirement. They call it N minus 1, so full redundancy across the network. That has now been delayed and deferred back uh, from the earlier dates of around 2016, 2017, deeper into the 2020s, around 2022, 23. So you can see this, this financial crunch that Eskom is facing is uh, having implications, but we're going to have to become much more creative in the way we address um, these connection risks in the coming few years. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.